Packet Heads, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to talk about how to spotlight TCP delays, even in trace files that have a lot of different simultaneous conversations. So stick around. So in this channel, we focus on Wireshark, TCP, and how to analyze application and network problems. As in this video, a lot of times I'll share the trace with you and you can follow right along. So go ahead and click the link in the description down below so you can download the trace file and you can follow right along. While you're down there, if you don't mind clicking subscribe or like if you enjoy this content. Okay, so spotting TCP delays. A lot of times when I share a trace file with you, it's a nicely filtered trace. It's just a single TCP connection. But the reality is that when we're capturing problems on a network, a lot of times we have larger trace files or files that have a lot of different simultaneous TCP connections happening in tandem. So how can we find the ones that are slow or that one sole application response or that one spot where things get hung up? That's what I wanted to show you today in this trace file. So let's go ahead and open up Wireshark and let's dig. So a lot of times what happens in trace files when people are trying to find slowness, what they'll do is they'll set up a delta time column. And what that does is it shows us the amount of time between packets. And here you can see in this profile, I have a delta time displayed column. Now what I have seen some do is they'll come up to Delta and they'll sort on that column. Then they'll hit the green down arrow and that will jump them to the bottom of the trace. And this will show the packet with the most delay to the one previous. And it sounds simple. You might think, okay, great. We found a packet that has 1.167 seconds between it and the one before. We found the problem. But really when we have a lot of applications, a lot of protocols, a lot of connections going on in the same trace file, this number that we see is not in context. It's possible that that measurement, 1.167 seconds, has nothing to do with the conversation that this packet is in. Now, since I don't have a display filter, the packet that came before this packet could have been anything, an ARP packet, ICMP, UDP, anything that has nothing to do with this packet itself. But what I wanna do is I wanna set up a new column and it's gonna be a TCP time column that shows me this time measurement in context to the conversation. Let me show you what I mean. Let's grab any TCP packet and we're gonna come down to our TCP details. While I'm at it, I'm just going to resort my frame number just to put everything back in order. Really doesn't matter, as long as you grab any of the TCP packets here, you're gonna be fine. Let's grab one of those and we're going to expand TCP. We're gonna come down to timestamps, gonna expand that. And then below that, I see time since previous frame in this TCP stream. I'm gonna right click that, and I'm gonna go apply as column. Now, because this is a little bit wordy up here and it takes up a lot of space, what I'm gonna do is right click it and I'm just gonna say edit column. Now up on top, I can remove the title and I can change it to TCP Delta. Then I can squeeze this back together a little bit. So now what this does is it gives me three different timers, if you will. I have my running total of time, I have my delta time, which is delta time displayed, and then I have TCP delta. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and sort the TCP delta column now. And then I'm gonna come up to the green arrow and then that will let me see the worst examples in the trace file. So now check out what we have. We have 19 seconds, we have 20 seconds, we have several 9.998996 seconds just above that. So I have several packets where there were genuine delays. Now we didn't see this in the delta time because remember, if we're unfiltered, if we're just opening up any trace file, that delta time won't show us the time in context to the conversation. It just shows us from this packet to the one above it, regardless of what that one above it was. So here, my eye, this is what my eye does, just to give you a little trick. Something that I look for is what is the direction of delay? Is the source the client or is the source the server? Now in this case, with just a glance, I can see 192.168.10. That was my machine going out and talking to a bunch of different systems. But if I look for the ones where the server is the source, those are the ones that my eye is gonna zero in on. Now the reason for that, there's several, just to make it brief, a lot of times the client side can have delays simply because the client is not reacting. For example, if I go out to a website and I need to punch in my username and password, 
Well, I can go out to that site. Those things can be quick. But then the time it takes for the user to punch in their username and password, that can just take time. So Chris, then my password, enter. Whatever that amount of time is, that can be client think time or client wait time. So it's not unusual on the client to see these larger delays simply because the client isn't doing anything. So be careful about shooting the messenger. I'm not saying the client is never involved, but it's not uncommon to see the bulk of the delays to be on the client side. However, on the server side, those are the ones that I wanna take a closer look at. And here I can see a pattern too in this trace file. Notice that that's almost 10 exact seconds and I see it several times. So what I wanna do is come in here and I'm going to grab one of those packets coming from the server. And now let's put this packet back in context. I'm gonna right click it and I'm going to say conversation filter TCP. Okay, what we wanna be sure to do at this time is sort our number column to put these packets back in order. So now let's take a look at what we see here. Here we have our handshake, we have our SYN, SYNAC. SYNAC comes back 163 milliseconds later. That gives me my benchmark network round trip time since I'm capturing client side. And here I can see that round trip time again. Here I see that round trip time again. Now as I'm coming down here, I see packet 787. This is the server, it sent some stuff to me. The client comes and says it's packet 792. This is an empty acknowledgement. There's no data, there's no payload. There's no segment data that's being transmitted from client back to server, simply an empty ACK. And then after this ACK, we wait 10 seconds for the server to say the next thing. Now this is a TLS handshake. This is encrypted traffic. So we don't know exactly what was contained within this application data. In fact, if we come down here, we can usually see just a bunch of codes and things in there. But what we do know is that this server was taking 10 seconds to get back to us. So right there, this is not a client side problem. The client wasn't the one waiting. Our network round trip is about 163 milliseconds around that. I can see it waver just a little bit, but I'm having this persistent thing where this server is responding after 10 full seconds. See, now what I can do is I can start to move my analysis. I know um, it's possible that we could set up some client side key logging and we can decrypt this. However, I'm sure at this moment that I don't have to beat up on my clients. I don't have to beat up on the network. I know that I can trace that issue to the server side. Now there's a whole lot more that I could show you just with this trace file, but the point of this video was to show you how you can quickly spotlight TCP delays even in larger unfiltered trace files. Just add a TCP delta time column and then sort that column and then that can help to pinpoint those TCP delays that you'll be looking for. Now remember, don't over blame the client. It's possible the client was just typing in a password. So be sure not to shoot that side of the conversation. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to spotlight TCP delays in Wireshark. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for stopping by the channel.